don't leave the chuck key in the chuck. Just doing it right here in front of you makes me a little anxious. In this situation, the machine is powered down and unplugged. But still, that's what I want to talk to you about is the habits that you need to build around tools like this to prevent you ever from having an accident with one. If you're just starting out in machining or you're starting a new job at a machine shop, why not take advantage of the situation and show off a little bit in the ways that matter? And by that I mean pay attention to chuck key safety, wrench and hand tool safety. By showing yourself that amount of respect, you are going to naturally get respect from other people in your workplace. In my opinion, you should be a little bit wisely afraid of this tool. This is a special tool in the history of the machining world. It gets and deserves extra respect because it is a little bit more dangerous than most of the other hand tools in the shop. When I pick up one of these tools, I emotionally feel the weight of responsibility that goes with this tool. It's the use of it, the purpose that it serves has some extra added responsibility to it. This tool is either sitting on the rack on the storage shelf, wherever you keep it, it has a home, okay? It's either in its home or it's in your hand. There's nothing in between, okay? When you use this to adjust your chuck, your hand is in contact with it the whole time. You never ever let your hand go of this tool. That's the rule. And the reason for that is, if you ever forget and turn the machine on, it's going to throw this tool in some direction at you, either at your face, at your chest, or over your shoulder at someone behind you. The danger of that is that these tools can be any number of size from a few ounces to dozens of pounds. The amount of force you get out of that varies by the size of the tool and the machine that it's being used on. Your actions in the shop affect everyone around you, not just you. If a piece of the machine or a chuck key or a wrench goes flying, if it misses your head, it still may fly past you over your shoulder and hit someone else that's in the same room with you. Everyone around you is gonna notice. Your manager is gonna notice, your coworkers are gonna notice, and they're looking to see if they can trust you to not only not hurt them, but not kill them by accident. This is such an unusual tool. It belongs where it belongs and you don't move it from that place. A good example of that is you wanna make people in your shop around you nervous. Just walk around with the chuck key. The bigger it is, the better. You're gonna get some funny looks and I guarantee you a few people in the shop that see that are gonna assume that you just had an accident. It belongs in your hand in the chuck or in its home on the machine. So just walking around with this tool is gonna to make people think something happened or that something's wrong. All the old school machinists know this. If they see you for a moment, take your hand off that chuck key while it's in the chuck, you have instantly and silently lost your status in the shop. It's gone immediately. The only way to get it back is for them to educate you on why you can't do that and then watch you and see you never do it again. Even then, some of the old school pros may never work with you. The Chuck Key issue is really an old school covenant agreement with a lot of machinists. They just won't compromise on it and the moral of the story is just don't do it. Now, I do understand that in some situations, the force that the chuck key has when it gets ejected may be pretty small. Small chuck keys don't have a lot of force. They're gonna be used on smaller machines, generally, that don't have a high starting, starting torque or speed. It's gonna depend a lot on where the key is left in relation to the operator, okay? Being straight up and down is the most common, but you may also find that you're back here operating your chuck for whatever reason to get the settings that you want. Now, when that chuck key is ejected, if it's back here and it comes around, it's gonna do this and come out towards you somewhere. 
you're always going to get a partial arc ejection, okay? If it's back here, you're getting more force built up, more RPM and more speed by the time you get all the way out here and it gets thrown out. Whereas if you're operating in the front here, it's probably going to get thrown down with very little force or get jammed up in your machine. Now I have seen a few demos that people have done about literally showing you how the chuck key is ejected. I don't care about any of that. I don't care. If you just make it a hard and fast rule to never leave the chuck key in the chuck, you will never have this problem. This is not an issue about how badly you might get hurt. It's an issue about why set up the situation of being able to get hurt. It doesn't make any sense. Just never do it. It should be a lifestyle principle that you set for yourself and you live by it. If you don't follow this rule because you've gotten used to some other mechanism or safety feature, sensor or feature of the machine that prevents you from being able to leave the chuck key in there, what are you gonna do when that one day comes around? You're gonna run a machine that either doesn't have the feature, that safety feature is broken, it fails while you're using it, or it's not even available on that machine. What are you gonna do? Then, not knowing how to treat the chuck key properly, and you're setting yourself up for an accident. Why not, from the beginning, eliminate the possibility of that problem, instead of delaying that to an accident in your future? Ultimately, you need to understand what the machine that you're using does and how it does it. In the example of the lathe, the main part of the machine is the spindle and the chuck, and it rotates, okay? And it's a very simple movement, but it does it with a lot of precision and a lot of power. Most machines over a few horsepower have the capability of pulling you into the machine and potentially killing you. This thing has enough power that if you get stuck or mangled or your hair goes in there or your clothes go in there and you don't manage to pull free in that half a second you have before it pulls you in, it will rip you in and wrap you around that spindle and it will keep going unless someone else in the shop comes over to turn it off. That's one reason that you shouldn't let inexperienced people run equipment by themselves. Arguably, probably nobody should be running big equipment by themselves. For that reason, if anything happens and you're stuck in the machine, there's nobody to turn it off. The machine doesn't do anything that you don't tell it to do. If you leave that chuck key in the chuck and you turn the machine on, it's gonna turn on. It doesn't know that you're there. It doesn't care that you're there. It doesn't have any feelings. This is not a living thing. Another example of a similar issue that uh, is sort of as dangerous as the chuck key issue is a lot of the old school machinists would do things like placing parallels in the chuck in order to get a square alignment of a part and then you would tighten it down and then you would remove the parallels, okay? This gives you a nice alignment of the part. The problem with this is if you do not remember to take that parallel out of there, just like the chuck key, and you turn that machine on, it's either gonna throw these parallels at your face or it's gonna throw the parallel part way out and the spindle's gonna rotate and jam it against the bedways of the machine, which is also going to damage the machine and destroy your parallels. This particular method, while I learned how to do that very early on and I still use it occasionally, I don't teach that anymore. How do you guarantee the operator removes the parallels? You can't. There's no safety mechanism for that. That's even more of an issue than the chuck key because it doesn't have a self-ejecting mechanism. There are lots of options for chuck keys. The most common old school one is a spring that just goes on the end of the chuck key so that when you put it in the hole, if you let go of it, it self-ejects. It'll literally fall out onto the floor if you let it. This doesn't allow you to leave the chuck key in. It's not foolproof because this spring 
has to be very specific for each chuck. Okay, if this spring is too light and the chuck key is big and heavy, it'll compress that spring and sit in there all day long. So even if you get a chuck key with the safety spring, make sure it's the right weight and replace it if it's not. Probably the safest thing is to never let an employee or anybody that's not trained use a chuck key without a safety device. There's a couple other ones available on the market. They're pretty good. They're super annoying, but they work. Another chuck key problem is drill chucks. Here's another self-ejecting key option. This key has a pin that's spring-loaded in the middle. When you put it in the chuck, if you let go of it, it falls out by itself. You physically cannot let go of the key and have it stay in the chuck. This is the traditional version that would just sit in there and you could potentially leave it in there. The reason that I wanted to show this, even though it's not powered, is because you should still follow the same principle. Never leave any chuck key in any chuck. It doesn't matter if it's powered or not. Don't do it. I don't even really want to talk about the fact that probably all machines in the future will have sensors on them that prevent you from turning them on if the chuck key is in the machine. What if that 11 cent switch or sensor fails just one time? You're gonna have an accident from that. I'm all for safety systems and mechanisms and features and they keep getting better, but the reality is that your safety is ultimately up to you. It's up to you to look before you cross the road, as an example. I've noticed quite a few times that people don't even look before they cross the road anymore. It's an interesting observable example of natural selection, I would say. This wrench is essentially the chuck key for a collet closer chuck. Never leave this key or this wrench on the chuck. There's no reason to. Why would you ever do that? There's no reason to leave this on here other than during tightening or removal. Once it's tightened or removed, it comes out. No problem, right? Another one, don't stack tools on your machines, especially moving parts of the machines, okay? Don't leave tools in parts of the machine. It's harmless right now, right? It's facing you. When you go to operate that machine, now what is it doing? It's running into the part that's spinning in the chuck. And then if you keep going, it's gonna run into the machine itself. No reason to do that. Take them off, put them away. Surface grinder, different kind of machine, same problem. Never leave tools on surfaces of the machine that they're gonna fall off. This has no support. It's tilted down. It's leaning towards the floor. You're begging for it to just fall off, okay? That's not a place to store tools. If you need to constantly adjust your covers and things like that, don't leave the wrenches on there. They're gonna fall out. They can potentially fall into things you're working on and get thrown back at you, okay? If you really need to adjust this bolt all the time, get a handle. You can get a adjustable handle that will screw on that you can just move that has no tools required. Even things like fixtures, okay? This tilting table, don't leave the handle on it while you're operating it. This is gonna vibrate and fall off. And while that may not hurt anything in any significant way, it's going to damage the machine, it's gonna damage the handle, it's gonna fall on the ground and make a terrible noise and possibly disrupt your work or scare you or surprise you, which may make you cause another accident and hurt yourself, even though nothing bad actually happened. Look at this. These are those adjustable handles, okay? This is a good example. You can loosen this and tighten it up without any tools. You can lift up the handle and ratchet it over to close or lock tight in the orientation that you want it to lock tight in. You want to make sure that you're either not going to hurt yourself when you adjust it, if the machine is moving, hopefully it's not while you're adjusting it, and you want to make sure that when it's tightened, it's not in a position that's going to run into something else that moves in the machine. Horizontal milling machine. Different machines, similar problems, okay? When you're adjusting the spindle or setting your spacers and your cutters, 
never leave the wrench on the spindle without your hand on it. This is another version of the chuck key. There's no reason ever to have this on here when it's not touching your hand. When you're done tightening it, or if you have to stop and go do something else, you take it off. This is a keyed chuck, and this goes for milling machines and drill presses. This is the classic one. This one does not self-eject. So you can potentially let go of this and start up the machine and it will come flying out. Same thing, it's a chuck key. When you spin it, it comes out. Don't do it. I don't care how small this is. I don't care that it probably won't hurt you. It doesn't matter. It's about your process and the principle about how you work. It's not about every little situation that may or may not hurt you. There's no reason to do it. Why take the risk? Why calculate every situation when you could just not do it? This is literally a lathe chuck in a milling machine with the same chuck key, okay? Same problem. Don't leave it in there. This is a super spacer. You are clamping on parts that you're then gonna do milling on. This chuck does not move at all under power. It's a hand crank thing, okay? Theoretically, it probably will never hurt you. With the chuck key in there, you run the risk of running into it with your machine is probably the most likely. You can rotate it around until you run into the table, but still, out of principle, you never leave this in here. It goes back to that fear. You should have a little bit of fear of this tool. This is a scary tool that should prompt you to treat it with extra respect. It's a special thing. Treat it like a special tool. You know, you change this tool, you tighten it, and you're done. You take it out. I don't care what you're doing. Don't ever leave this in here and turn your back or walk away. It's the same problem. You turn it on, this comes out at you or somebody else. There's no reason to do that. You know, once you're done, you're done. Take this tool out, put a new one in, you tighten it, and you take it out. There's no reason to let go of this in the tool holder. Don't leave wrenches and tools and adjustable things on your machine when you're not using them. It just creates another thing to fall off while you're using it. It rattles. Eventually, it will rattle and fall off and run into the machine, what you're working on, hit you, damage something, dent something, scratch something. Don't leave shit on your machine that you're not using at the moment, okay? It's all got to be tight and in place for what you're doing. No extra crap. If you want to gain traction and make progress in your job, be the guy that does safety automatically, without hesitation, all the time. That will get you a good foundation of respect to stand on. It's a good basic way to gain respect from your manager and your coworkers. Then work on building your skills and advancing your career. Try to be the person that people will trust, that they'll go to for help and advice in your area of expertise. Be the person that has never hurt anyone else. Be the person that has all their fingers. Be the person that will stop someone from doing something that looks like they might cause or have an accident. 